Hey everybody, Brian Good here. It's uh, going to be a long post today because uh, i got a special treat for you guys at the end for you snow lovers. I feel bad yesterday. Uh, they didn't have much to talk about, but uh, I'll try to make it for it for you guys today. Uh, as far as what's on the board today, one item, and that's not until later next week. I don't see anything exciting, remotely exciting uh, when it comes to anything wintry. Uh, until we get to this period, and I'll explain more on that in just a second. First off, here's the setup today, and I've got it on a, kind of a sensitive mode on cloud cover, so these are not real thick clouds over us. They're real thin, uh, serious uh, passing overhead. But look at our current temperature, 57 as of uh, last check, so a nice uh, warm afternoon. So here is the setup as we head into this weekend. We're going to have this upper low that is now moving in across California and Oregon. It's going to stall as we head into this weekend. It's going to keep sitting in pieces of energy uh, into the Ohio Valley and warm air on top of that. Again, warmer than usual. Uh, we do have also the influence we're going to be watching of Tropical Storm Sandy. And we'll have to just see how much of this moisture gets pushed into that flow into our neck of the woods or is this hold back a little bit and wait uh, another few days until later next week to influence us. I think it's going to be involved probably in the system that's going to come through here Monday and Tuesday. Again, multiple waves passing through. Uh, one of the stronger ones showing up today, especially in the Euro, has been the one that comes through on Tuesday. And that one probably would have the majority of the moisture from Sandy at that point uh, being involved. So uh, quite a bit of rainfall to talk about, really. Uh, once you start on Friday into Tuesday, uh, it's a pretty wet uh, forecast because of that upper low with the Rockies. It just crawls uh, to the east. So let's get right to the models. 57 now, 60 in Tell City. Uh, here we go, the short term. Tonight, not too bad. A few high clouds around 39, 40 or so for a low tonight. A little bit warmer than yesterday. Uh, again, the models are undercutting too much from what uh, I think we will be at when it comes to how much dry air we have at play. So I think we're going to go at about 63 for uh, Wednesday. And then as we into Thanksgiving Day, a lot of you will be sitting down perhaps around 12, 1 o'clock. Have a dinner with your family. I think we'll be in the 60s by that point. And by the afternoon, again, the models say about 64. I'm thinking, again, it's going to be uh, it's too low. I think it's going to be a little higher than that. Uh, the record is 73 for the warmest Thanksgiving we've had. And that's one of our older rec records, too, back in 1896. I don't think it's going to get to 73. But it really ain't going to be that far from it either at the same time. Um, so overall, Thanksgiving's looking really, really nice. Now, the rain has slowed down on today's data. In the, well, in the past 24 hours, really, for the shoppers. If you're heading out early Friday morning, it's looking drier now than it did yesterday. We'll see if that trend holds. In fact, if you head all the way out through perhaps even midday, you may stay dry, especially in Louisville and across Kentucky. The more north and west you go, though, the chances are you're going to run into the rain quicker. So if you uh, still have plans to go shopping early Friday, uh, it may be warm and it may be dry, but take the umbrella with you because we will likely see the rain move in by Friday afternoon. Here's a different way of looking at this. This is the GFS model. I've got plotted here, see that green, that is the rainfall, and then the colors are the actual temperatures that have plotted as well. You see it's really cold behind the system. Now this, this does not show you rain or snow, it's just flat out precipitation falling from the sky, so uh, keep that in mind. All right, so here we go. Friday at midday. If we're, uh, again, shopping early, your chances are pretty good at this point, at this timing holds, that the, most of the rain will hold off until later in the afternoon. Even then, as the rain band pushes through, it kind of fades as we head into Friday night. So it may be very light rain, so maybe some promising news, especially for light up Louisville and for light up Bardstown, two taking place Friday night. Uh, but it won't last long, because I mentioned we got multiple waves that are going to be passing through. So our next one's already waiting for us. It's going to be gearing up and heading our way as we head into the day uh, here on Saturday afternoon. So Saturday morning may start off dry, but by Saturday afternoon, Saturday night, here comes our next slug of moisture riding through the area. This will continue, it looks like, into Sunday uh, with some showers passing through. I will say the Euro is a little more aggressive uh, with not only the uh, rain potential for Sunday, but also the uh, potential for warm air uh, back into the 60s maybe on Sunday. We'll see how that plays out. It depends on the path, really, of uh, that low as it tracks north and east um, through the Ohio Valley. Then we finally got our one more surge that comes through. This will be again Monday night into Tuesday, and this is the one that uh, could produce a few showers around. And then as it leaves, at this point, it looks like most of the moisture is going to be out of here when the cold air comes in behind it on a Wednesday. 
Uh, I wouldn't roll out some of that maybe uh, being left over for a flurry or two, but right now chances that look small enough that I'm not going to include it in the uh, confidence meter. Uh, once we get, out, get beyond that, then this is when things get really interesting. Uh, we've get, we're getting a system that's going to be developing the Gulf Coast rotting up the eastern seaboard. And we've got some cold air that's wanting to get pulled down. Now this is going to catch your eye when it comes to, uh, for those of you that are snow lovers, you know this track. You know what can happen here, especially when you get an upper low that could develop here on the upper side of this system. Remember, we're fighting against the positive EPL at this point, although it is showing signs it wants to try to reverse later. But we're going to be fighting that. So anything really when it comes to cold air or these systems moving through this active southern flow is going to be really going to have to be a dynamic node that can grab whatever cold air it can. And that is not going to be known until we get right up on the storm. So it's going to be a low confidence scenario, not only because it's so far out, but because of uh, the setup too. But uh, again, this will be around the 4th of December. Uh, another look at uh, rainfall before we get back into that detail. I mentioned the Friday through Saturday. Again, the Euro coming a little heavier, mainly because of the part of Sunday event. But i got to mention that, that second one that comes in Monday and Tuesday, it's more aggressive. That could be another one uh, inch of rain added on top of this for Monday and Tuesday. So this is only through Sunday. So altogether, about three inches of rain uh, could fall uh, between uh, Friday and Tuesday of next week. So again, a wet period coming our way. We'll update those totals as we uh, get a little better handle on that. All right, so going back to uh, when the front, all the rain, finally, this upper low that's in the Rockies finally leaves us. I mentioned how it may have some residual moisture. Looking at the Euro, 850s are cold enough, but when you look at the moisture a lot, there's just not a whole lot to uh, really work with there on that front. So I really don't see a whole lot of problems when it comes to uh, anything frozen on that end. All right, I didn't mean to put this map in here, so let me get past it. There we go, there is the moisture level. <laughs> Sometimes these are in the wrong order. Uh, here's the uh, moisture level at 700 on the euro. And again, it's uh, the column's drying out rapidly. So uh, chances for a flake, eh, maybe. If we get closer in time, I can get a better handle on that. But right now, I'm not going to be, yay, snowflake. All right, so let's talk about the one on the 4th, December 4th. Here's the GFS. Again, moving in on the, on the Gulf Coast. These are surface temperatures uh, flirting with the ability for this to be snow. We'll see how it plays out. The Euro just came in. I don't have a lot of data yet on this, but it is very similar with a look. It does not have, again, as much cold air. In fact, it holds it back to the north. So it'd be, uh, in this scenario, it'd be more of an upper low that would really would have to pull into it. And it's not far from that. It's already down to a positive two at 850. Uh, so there is a chance we could see this really either deepen to be a stronger system for the East Coast, which we've seen hints of that the past few model runs. If that were to be the case, that could really take a lot of this cold air and it would tug on it and pull it downward. Uh, question is, when would that happen, if that were to happen? Would it be too late? Would it happen when it, the storm got here? If that's the case, then it's going to be all cold air being tugged into this area and snow, and it would just miss us completely. But if the low deepens uh, right at the right point, <laughs> and it's a lot of ifs and whats, I know. I'm not trying to wish cast here. Don't give me that look. But, uh, but it is an interesting setup, and that's why it belongs on the board. All right, now for the snow fun, I promise you guys. You know, I'm not a big fan of the CFS model, which is a model run of the GFS when it goes to the monthly outlooks, it gets kind of crazy. But it's snow forecast for accumulated snow, I think, kind of are fun to look at because they don't look at the amounts. I want you to look at placement. Remember, remember that as I explain these, okay? Uh, this is for uh, the next 10-day period. You see that it's really focusing on the plains. We see a lot of signs of that. All right, that makes sense, uh, giving the uh, upper level low and the amount of moisture and systems flowing in. Uh, again, rain for us and then... Uh, and the snow to the uh, on the back side. Ignore all the areas where it shows snow for us. It would be very light, if anything, falling. Then as we head into the next 10-day period, uh, it is showing signs. It's trying to pick up on um, perhaps that southern system that could be developing into uh, the southeast corner. We'll see if that's going to be more of a reality or not. And then as we head into the end of the month, beginning of uh, January, uh, can, again, you got some wild cards here showing all kinds of scenarios. But this is the one I really wanted to show you is the one that takes us into the first period of 2016. Notice where all these snow paths are for accumulations uh, to take place, mainly south of the Canadian border. And this could be a good indicator of our pattern flip that we've been talking about maybe taking place, perhaps at these dates here of January. We'll see. Anything between now and then is going to be rogue. It is going to be uh, dynamic cooling events, upper low kind of scenarios. Otherwise, anything that gets locked in a little more exciting for you fans of bigger systems, you're going to have to wait until we get to more of a pattern that looks more like this, and that could very well be a while. <laughs> All right, so 
that's it for today. We'll see how it plays out. Enjoy the warm weather. Get your holiday decorations up while you can because it's going to be nice and warm. I'm going to do that probably after I eat turkey on Thursday.